So if you both had different goals, what would you say was the most challenging part of making it all work? Well, I think I think we started off trying to uh, adjust the meals so they would work for both of our goals, and we kind of quickly realised that wasn't gonna wasn't gonna work out because also we're trying to manage obviously Myra's diet, yeah. you know, toddlers are fussy. There's all sorts of factors. Mm -hmm. So for for your main period of cut, Mo's really done his own done a lot of his own food, mm -hmm. and then we've there's certain things that I've cooked that he can like participate in other things. He couldn't really. Mm. Again. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I had to literally draw, like, you know, come to a decision where I was going to have to meet my numbers or you know, I had to I had to be like, I had, I had, you had, I had to be strict. Really. I had to be strict. That's it. And the thing mm. is, like, I think that's one of the, uh, even the mental shift. So, shopping list was one thing mm. where, you know, we had to make that big adjustment. Mm. So, and figuring out what was working for me mm. and he does it all. So he's so good. He's he's been very disciplined. He doesn't really worry about the like the flavour of the food. He's just he's concerned about meeting his numbers for this for the cup. Oh wow. So you know he's well he worries about it, but he just enjoys <laughs> <he doesn't laughs> it. <laughs> what would what would you say? Or um, if you have tried yeah. other diets in the past, what would you say is the biggest difference between those? Yeah. And your journey on the program. So over the years, I've tried and been on so many different diets and um, probably everyone that you could imagine um, but through none of those diets do you ever learn how to eat properly mm -hmm. you just uh, eat what they tell you to eat yeah. and don't figure things out for yourself the program what that's really helped me do is understand the importance of having fat protein and carbohydrates um, in my meals and the importance of when to eat those meals to give me the energy to be able to do the workouts um, i would say as i was at the beginning of the process, um, it was quite hard for me to hit my protein levels yeah. because I um, was a vegetarian, mm. so I was a vegetarian for 10 years, and so I made the decision to go back to eating meat, uh, and that really did help. It helped to increase that protein level, which then obviously in turn helps to build that muscle mass. Mm. Um, so that was a big decision to make, but I made it because I wanted this process to be successful mm. uh, and it did make a massive difference so I'd say that the the process and the plan and the program mm. um, has just really taught me how to understand taught me to understand how I need to eat yeah. um, and how I need to eat for me because one size doesn't fit all mm. um, so how would you say you're eating from just having a operation and obviously being in lockdown to where it is now what would you say has been the biggest change well from when I had the operation to actually when I started the programme, mm -hmm. I actually didn't change my eating habits at all. Mm -hmm. I just carried any what I was eating and if I wanted to have, go up in the morning and have a milky latte, three digestive biscuits, I would do. Mm -hmm. um, probably hiding behind the fact that I thought well, I'm training so I can do what I like. Mm -hmm. Not realising that, you know, weight was just gradually creeping on and on and on and on, and then you don't realise. And then when I saw the, um, obviously, they advertised the programme, yeah. I thought, well, I'll have a look see what it's all about. Obviously, every time somebody comes out with a new mm. diet or a new program, mm. I'll be everybody's going to be sceptical. But mm. I thought, well, I'm going to go in it with not being sceptical. I'll just have a look see what they've got to say. Mm. Went in, I jumped on to the in body test, mm. and I was shocked mm. where I'd gone from mm. to where I ended up being mm. pre operation to post operation, how much weight I put on. It wasn't so much the body weight I was concerned about, it was the body fat. Mm. And it was a visceral fat, mm. which obviously you can't see. It just mm. hardly, that, that's, that was my two, my two major concerns. Mm. And then obviously when we sat down and looked at it, um, and then we decided, well, let's look at your eating habits, and then we changed that. And then from that point on, I just cut out um, all sugars, yeah. majority of sugars anyway. Um, and obviously not being at work, not being going out as much, obviously wasn't drinking anywhere near when I was diet drinking before, mm. which was a big help. Um, and then I went, after I think of about three and a half, four weeks, I went training and then I had uh, like a Marks and Spencer's chocolate cookie, had half of it. Yeah, yeah. And I completely bonked out. Yeah. I had to go up too, so I went home, laid, I literally laid on the sofa, I was like zombied out for an hour and a half, fell asleep. Because the sugar yeah. just absolutely smashed me to pieces. Yeah. So I was like, mm, that can't be good for you. Mm -hmm. So then that obviously gave me another kick on to try and push harder with trimming down any of the excess stuff that I shouldn't, shouldn't have been eating. What would you say, um, so I don't know if you've been on other diets and stuff before, but what would you say is the biggest difference from the program to say, okay, 30 day, 
fat burning challenge or like a short. What, what would you say is, is the biggest difference? So I've been on different pro different uh, like I used to you know, put on weight, cut weight yeah. on a regular basis, basic weight, you know, if it was uh, any, any not really competition but something small scale what I was participating in the past. Uh, the difference was previously I was given a list of things that I gotta do and that kinda like made me uh, follow a routine rather than figure out which one's gonna work for me, which one's Actually, not going to work for me. And also, another thing was uh, how we were able to do the reset initially. Mm -hmm. You know, when even though I felt like I was eating right, we were able to capture pretty much uh, everything that I, what I that I should be getting. But it was working. You know, you and Lou were able yeah. to help me. So it's flexibility, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. flexibility. It's, it's it's mainly that. It's mainly that flexibility. Learning is another thing, and also. Uh, it's like I there was few things that I had I was thinking about. The feedback for me was the biggest thing, I think. And on top of that, you guys were able to monitor if, if it was working for me or not much sooner. If I've done it like in, in my previous uh, experiences, what I've noticed is usually that this takes me a much longer time. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that you guys were able to figure it out and also respond to the changes so quickly, I think that kind of uh, helped me out really well. And also on top of that, I think there was some feedback which I was able to provide, especially uh, during the workout itself. Especially Sometimes I was able to tell Lou that mm -hmm. you know, I'm feeling a little weak or something mm -hmm. like that. And then uh, same with you, and you were able to give me a correction on mm -hmm. what I was eating. And I think the speed of the result was really high, mainly yeah, from those two. For me, it was um, yeah. learning that um, because my goals are different, my yeah. goals are about becoming 100%. stronger and healthier. So um, for me, it was learning that snacking is not a bad thing. Like a lot of diets will tell you, you know, don't don't snack, don't you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. Whereas that, what I learned, a big thing for me was if I if I eat well in the morning and I have a good snack mid morning and a good early lunch, I'm much less likely to, to reach for the um, yeah. the bad things in the afternoon when you have that like three o'clock, you know, yeah. Yeah, much much less likely to reach yeah. for the for the sort of sugary things to keep me going. Yeah. Um, so actually, learning that eating more at the right times and eating the right things is, is you know is really good. I can train a lot harder mm. and train more mm. more times a day. Um, I think from the cardiovascular side of things, yeah. um, it's gone through the roof. Rowing, skier, that sort of stuff, mm. and. Um, mm. The improve before I couldn't keep up, before I couldn't stay at that pace. Um, maybe because I didn't have the mobility in the hip um, and because I was heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but now, obviously, being lighter, having the improvement in cardiovascular mm -hmm. to push me going, yeah. I'll be able to train that more because I'm eating the whole foods, the right foods, to allow me to train more. And the final question what would you say are your biggest takeaways from the six months? You, so, what have you learned? You say you're going to implement now into your your lifestyle, your training. Your lifestyle. Yeah, people, you know, people say, oh, you know, the, the program will be a lifestyle change, and then after that, you'll just fall back into your old habits. Mm -hmm. I think, me personally, mm -hmm. now those changes have happened, and I've been doing it for six months. That cycle is broken. Mm -hmm. So, to me now, eating on breakfast, I eat, and lunch and dinners, I eat. That to me is the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have had the cheeky biscuit here and a bit of chocolate there and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, you know, I'm not a monk. I'm yeah, not going to, you know. Yeah. And if I want to go out and have a glass of wine or a couple of glasses of wine, or if I want to have a bottle of red wine, I'm not going to have a bottle of red wine. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, I just means I'm training that a little bit harder the following week. Yeah. But the sustainability of this, mm. I think, um, works for me. Mm. Um, because I've had the days where I've, you know, not eaten 100% wow. correctly and whatever, but yeah. my weight hasn't gone oh. flying back up again. It's come off, stayed off, come off a bit more and stayed off. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it is a complete lifestyle change yeah. and it is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Where some people go, you've got these mad diets, like the Kato diet or whatever you want to call yeah. them, people go on, go back to a normal lifestyle, mm -hmm. normal diet, or just no way of living, mm -hmm. and they just balloon again. Yeah. With this, I, don't, I can't see it happening, to be honest. I think that's the biggest takeaway, that it is, a, it is sustainable, sustainable long term. Yeah. So, <laughs> Go in, take so let's say, let's look forward to say six months to a year down the line from that from today. What would you would you is it something you're going to carry on doing, or are you going to continue to build on what you've done? What are your goals moving on from now? Everything you've learned over the last five months about yourself, the way you eat, what you like to eat, 
and also about how the correct way to eat for obviously training and trying to live a healthy lifestyle. What are your next steps and plans? I think the six months have really embedded the habits, mm. which is good. Yeah. Um, and I have been able to identify, obviously through lockdown as well, mm. my real triggers. So being at home, so I'm working from home all the time when, when the box shut down and I wasn't coming here to train in the evening, I'd finish work at four o'clock yeah. and then I think, what, what do people do in the evenings? And that boredom would kick yeah. in and then I knew that that was a trigger for me. So yeah. boredom, I'd have my tea early and yeah. then I'd be hungry again hungry at seven o'clock. So for me, it's making sure that I've got things in place and I've got a good routine. So I work all day and then I come here, I have my snack at three o'clock, I come here for the five o'clock class, but by the time I get home, it's time for tea, which is good. So I think those habits are embedded enough mm -hmm. that they will just continue going forward. Nice. Um, and I will make sure that I identify those triggers. And Lou, you know, I spoke to Lou about the fact that I was bored mm -hmm. and I was eating because I was bored. Yeah. But the one good thing, even though I was eating that I was bored, I was eating good things. Yeah. I was just eating too much of it, but I wasn't reaching for the chocolates and the crisps. Mm. I, was, I was reaching for healthy snacks, but calories are still calories. Mm. Um, but it was making sure, you know, when Lou said to me, read a book or, you know, do something, and then I ended up renovating the stairs in my house, <laughs> <laughs> kept me out of mischief, kept yeah. me out of the fridge. Yeah. So I think the six months have really embedded those habits, which I will continue to take forward. Um, I'm going to really i really enjoy seeing how my body reacts to eating at different times and eating different foods but it's enjoyable to see how much my body's reacted to eating very healthy wholesome foods so it's not over complicated um you gave me the great suggestion of buying the muscle food meals and they really do make a difference because when you're home all day um you know you break for lunch you don't want to waste your lunch hour cooking so you take one of those out of the freezer whack it in the microwave six minutes job done it's all worked out in your macros you you know you can pod into my fitness pal so it's really really handy um so those kind of things just making life easier for me so i don't have to spend lots of time Cooking, I will continue to meal prep because that's works really well mm. as well. Um, what else would I say? Yeah, I think that's probably about it. Cool.